Hi everyone, Tally and Farrell here from Board of It and welcome to our review of Mantis Falls, a cooperative game that's only really cooperative sometimes, as the tagline reads. Set in a film noir-esque 1940s mob ruled town, the players have seen something that they shouldn't and have to get out of town tonight. But perhaps one of the players isn't all that they seem. Sorry, Sven's tapping me below the table and distracting me. <laughs> So what's interesting about Mantis Falls is that it's actually a social deduction game for two to three players, which is a player count you wouldn't expect to work with this genre. Now, you'll either be given the role of a witness, and in that case, you want to get to the end of the road and thus out of town, or you might be an assassin who wants a dead witness. But the twist is that every player can be given a witness role, meaning the game is cooperative if players can trust each other long enough to work together. Fun fact, we cannot do that because Tally insists on murdering me in every game we play, whether we're both witnesses or not. You're highly suspicious. First things first, players are going to find out what role they have. They'll be given a role card, which will tell them if they're a witness or an assassin. Then everyone will begin at the start of the road. On your turn, the first thing you'll do is you'll decide whether you want to move forward one space or not. Whether you do or don't, you'll then draw an event card. Now, these can be seen or unseen. If they're seen, everyone at the table will look at it, get to read it. If it's unseen, only the player who drew it will get to know what it says. Usually, these event cards contain negative effects and come in two types. Incidents, where something happens and are hard to avoid, or opposition, which are foe, which have an amount of health that you can defeat, and a number of outcomes for you if you do or don't defeat them. You don't resolve these right away, though, as first, both players will take an action round. In this round, cards can be played for their actions and multiples can be played as long as they're of the same suit. Or players can discard two cards from their hand or they can place one card in the conserved energy area or they can simply do nothing. If cards are played for their actions, they are revealed left to right and in alternating order between the two players. Perhaps they will attack the opposition or maybe they'll take the bus and get a few steps ahead on the road. If the event wasn't negated through the play of these action cards, then you will resolve it. If it was an unseen event, usually there's actually a choice about how the damage is dealt out. And because only the player who drew it can see it, they can actually lie about what it says or why they're dealing out damage in that manner. Although they still have to deal out all the damage, otherwise it would be cheating. Once the event is resolved, the turn is over, you'll draw back up seven cards and who the main player is will shift around the table. Now, the game is going to end once all players are on the end of the road or if a player dies. In either case, if all the witnesses are alive at this point, then they win. If one or more witnesses are dead, the assassin wins. And if both the witness and the assassin are dead, then it's a tie. Although I'm sure it won't really feel like that because <laughs> they're both dead. <laughs> first things first, the theme here is incredible as it's served by everything in the game. It completely captures the feeling of walking down a dark street at night with a stranger you're a little worried about. The art direction of everything makes it feel like you've stumbled into an episode of Twin Peaks. They've even made a free banging soundtrack to put on as you play, but also give other recommendations in the manual. Every time we play, we put candles all over the shop and dim the lights because that's how it demands to be played. Gameplay wise, it delights in creating a slow burn of tension. As the assassin, the worst thing a player can do is arouse serious suspicion before they are ready to strike. And this is because when someone is about to die, they get a last gasp, which means they can play a round of action cards. They can use these action cards to heal and remain alive, or more likely, if they're a witness, Use the call in a hit card, which instantly triggers the last gasp for the other player. This means that as the assassin, careful planning is key. 
whether you lure them away from a phone booth so they can't call in that hit, or just by having the right cards ready to survive that inevitable last gasp. And if you're playing as a witness, you're hampered by the fact you don't know if you're playing this game cooperatively or not. It's very easy to become very suspicious when you start to get a little too much damage from those unseen event cards. And from there, it's only a short leap to being into full panic and suspicion mode and just straight off attacking the other player because you might think it's your only way of winning and you're not going to survive. Tally. Now, getting to the end of the road is hard, which is why this can happen. But be your witness just trying to survive or an assassin trying to find the right time to strike, you're going to have a very tense, nail-biting experience. These event cards are where a huge amount of the tension in the game comes from because the fact that some of them are unseen means you never know if somebody is really telling the truth and they didn't have a choice about giving you that damage or if they're trying to do you over. And this uncertainty is where a huge amount of the mistrust between players comes from, particularly because some of these are written to be inherently suspicious. In our last game, there was actually one that was so inherently suspect that I, as the assassin, thought it was going to ruin the entire game for me because nobody would believe that I wasn't one after this card. So you can imagine my joy when another player was like, yeah, I don't believe you, and ended up playing a card that revealed that event for everyone, showing in that case I was telling the truth and I didn't have a choice, which then alleviated the suspicion from me and meant it was, in the end, easy for me to win because nobody suspected me, you know. Do a little cheeky murder. And what's also great about the events is that sometimes if you work together, you can dispel them. And this means you get a nice sense of cooperation, albeit in an honour amongst thieves type way. We do have two issues though. Firstly, it seems incredibly difficult to win as witnesses. We never had a game where this happened, including games where there were only witnesses. Event cards are usually bad, and there are multiple road cards along the route which also deal you damage, meaning it's a really tough ask to even get to the end of the road without an assassin also chipping away at you. Secondly, the randomness of the decks can also have a big effect on the game, so the event deck and the action deck. The action deck is probably a little worse in this regard because in order to win, you need to heal and you need to do damage, and you just can't guarantee that you're going to get cards which will allow you to do this. However, this is a social deception game where an awkward smile at the wrong time could sink you. So card randomness is probably not going to be the thing that prevents you from enjoying this game. And speaking of enjoyment, what's interesting about Mantis Falls is the enjoyment you get out of it actually evolves the more you play. When you first begin to play it, the enjoyment is kind of the same as any social deception game where you have the intrigue, the tension, the lying, the suspicion. And as you begin to play more and more, you start to learn the deck, specifically the action deck. It allows you to then build these multi-layer strategies to become more calculated. And then the enjoyment you get out of the game actually changes because it becomes this chess-like dance of card play and counterplay. You know, you can see what people might be trying to go for and arm yourself against it. And what helps this progression is the fact that Mantis Falls comes with a bunch of optional modules that you can switch in and out at your leisure. One example being the Full Circle module, which allows you to add more deeper and thoughtful action cards to the game that might be a little harder to pass, but when you do, their payoff is much better. We'd also be remiss not to mention the love and care that has gone into this game. The artwork, the components, the titles of the cards, all work together to create something beautiful. This is a real labour of love where every aspect has been inspected and polished to present a fully realised dream to players. Mm -hmm. It also comes with a second rule book which dissects each and every card, tells you how useful it is and suggests strategies to try it with which is incredible. We have the Kickstarter version which should be noted comes with wooden boards rather than cards. And that said, we'd just like to give a shout out to the designers, one of the best run Kickstarters we've ever seen. Just as one example, they noticed after repeated plays, some of the cards were getting a little bit marked quicker than they'd like. So they included a free pack of sleeves to all of the backers. Mount's Falls is a two to three player game, but mostly how we've been talking about it has been in the frame of a two player game. And this because the three player game is a little different. 
One of the players will be a bystander, and who the bystander is, like the main player, will rotate each turn. But the bystander is essentially on the sidelines. They can't take damage, they can't play action cards, and they're not affected by events. And while the three-player game is still fun, and arguably the tension is higher because you actually have two people to worry about now instead of one, it's also probably the weaker experience out of playing at two or at three. The crucial flaw is that the bystander is taken out of the active game. So if an assassin makes their move as the bystander, you're unable to do anything to avoid losing the game, even if you have a handful of cards that could have prevented it. It creates a sense of real frustration. Equally so, as a witness, maybe you have a suspicion, but you can't attack that player if they are the bystander. We understand it's this way because otherwise the game would be unbalanced for the assassin, but this solution is probably the least elegant part of the game. Yeah, I mean, there was a time you were the assassin and I was like dead sure and I wanted to kill you. But because I was the bystander, I was out <laughs> of it, then you murdered our friend. <laughs> Final thoughts? Mantis Falls isn't the perfect game. It can be a little too hard for the witnesses to win. The randomness of the cards can affect how well you do. And the three-player game doesn't come together as well as a two-player game. But Mantis Falls is a game of social deception. And these games will live and die on the intrigue, suspicion, and the interactions between players that they enable. And we're delighted to say that Mantis Falls provides all of these in spades. And these kind of games, the fun isn't whether you win or lose. It's the suspicion, the tension, and the drama you create as you play. Even better, the type of game it is changes the more you play. It evolves until it becomes full of tactical card plays and strategy. Make no mistake, this is a terrific two-player game. It's something that's unique and it oozes theme and atmosphere. And it is still really good at three players. We've seen this selling for around £20-25, which honestly is an absolute bargain for the experience it provides. Therefore, we are really happy to recommend Mantis Falls. 100%. If you enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you're not already, and feel free to ask us anything about the game or make a comment in, yes. the, in the comments down Perfect. below. We'd be happy to, to answer any questions about it. And now we're going to go and play Mantis Falls again. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.